recording to the cloud. We're good to go. Okay. Hi, folks. Thanks for uh, attending. Those who have signed up and unable to attend will have this recorded and I'll send it along to you. It'll also, of course, be available at the uh, website, uh, which is on the screen, the slide in front of you right now. Uh, I'd just like to take a few minutes to introduce myself. Um, we've at Almond Travel have been in business since 2003, uh, about 17 and a half years. So we have a fair bit of experience in the business. Uh, we, we do have a number of specialties. Uh, uh, they are in, in order uh, destination weddings in the Caribbean um, area, which is Mexico, um, uh, Cuba, Dominican Republic, et cetera. Um, uh, where, where that comes into place certainly would be anybody that's thinking about doing a special anniversary trip and wants to take extended family or friends. And of course, this is all dependent upon when we're all comfortable traveling again. But we have a lot of experience with uh, working with groups right across Canada. So if you do have uh, people that you would like to join you for your special occasion, then we can certainly do that as well. We also specialize in Florida. Um, and that is mostly theme parks, uh, although we do uh, book individual vacations uh, on the East and West Coast particularly to enjoy the sun and the sand. Um, and we can certainly help you with that. And of course, extended um, uh, family vacations would be uh, right up our alley as far as the theme parks. Uh, we have a lot of experience with the theme parks. Um, also Caribbean uh, trips, our, our experience with uh, destination weddings, uh, certainly uh, gives us a lot of experience with uh, different locations, uh, different countries, uh, different areas within countries and that sort of thing. So certainly um, if you are planning a, a, a vacation, we can help you with that. And last but not least, uh, cruises, both ocean cruises and uh, river cruises, uh, ocean cruises. We've uh, traveled to most of the popular areas uh, around the world and can give you some advice on that. And river cruising, uh, we've done 10 different itineraries around the world, including uh, three in Asia. So um, those are, are areas that uh, we can focus on. Um, uh, Rocky Mountaineer is uh, going to be our, our um, co-host uh, uh, today. Uh, we did a Rocky Mountaineer um, train ride as a preface to an Alaskan cruise, and it was a, an absolutely phenomenal uh, add-on. This is the uh, 12th presentation of about uh, 20 or 21 that we actually have planned, which occur at 6.30 every Tuesday, now into uh, early February. Uh, please check the CARP website for the additional dates. We're adding more as, uh, as we go along. Travel conditions. Well, we do see a light at the end of the tunnel, and it's a pretty bright light right now with the uh, vaccine, but the, the reality is that uh, Canada doesn't manufacture vaccines, so it's not gonna be uh, first in line to receive the vaccines. And when you consider they have to manufacture about 6 billion of them, it's gonna take quite a while for those to get rolled out in all areas of the world. So realistically, um, vaccinations uh, uh, for Canadians perhaps into September of this coming year. But you know, that doesn't stop you from thinking about places that you'd like to go to. A lot of the trips are not last minute anyway. They're trips that you plan uh, six months to a year or even longer in advance. So we know that the, the travel um, window is gonna open for us. It's just a question of um, when does that happen? So. Anyway, keep tuned. If you have any questions, certainly you can feel free to, to check with me. I'm not going to steer you in a direction that's not going to be in your best interests. Um, CARP's plan for travel. When we, uh, we have a relationship with CARP, we are uh, CARP Nova Scotia's uh, designated travel agency. Uh, we were invited uh, by Bill Van Gorder, who is the uh, COO and Chief Policy Officer for CARP National, as well as the founding chair for CARP Nova Scotia, in addition to being the senior spokesperson for CARP in the Maritimes. We know Bill on a couple of different levels. Uh, Bill um, is also well known for, for being involved in charitable uh, institutions. And he, uh, together with uh, another gentleman, formed 100 Men Who Give a Damn about four and a half years ago. And in that period of time, uh, we raised $350,000 uh, which went to local charities and all of it went to local charities. There was no overhead whatsoever. So I became acquainted with Bill working on the board 
uh, for that um, organization. And uh, after, shortly afterwards, Bill uh, used our services to book a couple of his trips, a scenic river cruise and um, a Rocky Mountaineer, as a matter of fact. So, uh, and he loved it. So anyway, um, <clears throat> I'd like to take a moment to introduce uh, Tyler Harrison uh, from Rocky Mountaineer, who is the business development manager for Eastern Canada for Rocky Mountaineer. Tyler will be taking us through a virtual visit to the Rocky Mountains with uh, Canada's premier um, train line, Rocky Mountaineer. It, um, Rocky Mountaineer has several wonderful itineraries for the Rocky Mountains, uh, as short as two days and, and longer up to five or six days, I, I think uh, Tyler will explain that to us. And uh, he's also going to have some exciting news in the sense that he's going to introduce a brand new itinerary for the Rocky Mountains in the United States, which ends uh, in Las Vegas or Los Angeles. So uh, I'm going to turn the presentation over to Tyler. Take it away. Perfect. Thanks so much, Danny, for that great introduction and all of that uh, excellent um, uh, review on CARP and everything that they're doing over there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Tyler Harrison. I'm the uh, Business Development Manager for Rocky Mountaineer for Eastern Canada. And uh, I've been doing quite a few of these virtual webinars over the last few months, as I'm sure you can imagine. Usually we like doing them in person, but uh, such is the uh, case with the world we live in right now. Um, so as Danny mentioned, I will be doing an overview of what Rocky Mountaineer is, just to get you acquainted with the product and uh, what the train experience is like in uh, Canada's West Coast and uh, the Canadian Rockies. We'll touch on subjects such as uh, health and safety updates, how we're managing with the COVID-19 situation, and then go through all of the different points about uh, planning your trip. Um, What's, uh, what destinations you can really dig deep into when you're on and off the train, as well as the itinerary add-ons. And then we'll go over, over everything such as uh, current promotions, our new enhanced flexible booking policy, and then we can open it up to any questions there. So uh, those are our sort of topics for today. If at any point in time you have any questions, please feel free to use the uh, chat box function and we'll get to those at the end. Um, so let's just touch on health and safety for uh, just a quick moment. Um, of course, over the last eight months, the COVID-19 situation worldwide and of course in Canada has changed the way that we uh, as Canadians are living our lives. And um, I can assure you that Rocky Mountaineer has felt this effect. And um, all over this time, we've learned to uh, evolve our best practices and follow government guidelines and um, industry standards just to make sure that when travel is possible again in 2021 that we are um, at the top of our game when it comes to health and safety. Nothing is more important than the health and safety of our guests while they're on board. So a few things I can talk about. We don't have details on absolutely everything just because uh, with our travel season being uh, late April 2021 as a start date, there are a few things that will change undoubtedly between now and then. Um, but we are looking at optimizing many of our processes. So if you've been on Rocky Mountaineer before or maybe seen some videos, uh, well, this upcoming season could look slightly different than it has in the past, but uh, everything is moving in a positive direction to hopefully make sure that uh, while you are on and off the train, um, again, your health and safety is our number one concern. So things we will be looking at optimizing are those check-in procedures when you're um, at the train station, on and off the train, but as well as your check-ins for coach transfers and into your hotel, we will be doing pre-travel screening just to make sure that everyone is uh, taken care of ahead of time um, and following those uh, safety protocols such as uh, social distancing, uh, making sure that uh, you're traveling with the same group as much as possible. There'll be no uh, movement between the train cars. So the uh, guest service hosts and culinary team that are on your train will be the same ones that are with you all the way through. Um, a few of the physical changes that we are doing on the train are upgrading our air, air filtration system. Uh, one of the advantages of a Rocky Mountaineer journey, even before COVID, is that we do use uh, fresh air cycling in through the train cars. It's not recycled air like you might find on an airplane or anything like that. Um, we are, of course, looking at upgrading our uh, safety procedures and uh, our culinary um, 
preparation of all your beverages and meals and snacks while you're on the train. That uh, process is a lengthy one. There's lots of pieces in place, but we're making sure that every single part of that is uh, taking into account the proper health and safety guidelines. And then, of course, uh, thorough sanitization of the train cars and uh, uh, a very high-tech electrostatic disinfectant spray that they'll be using after each <clears throat> use. So um, while Rocky Mountaineer obviously prides itself on the train experience, we do realize that there are many different facets to a Rocky Mountaineer journey that uh, don't involve the train, and we need to be 100% confident that each one of those elements is as safe as we can uh, make them be um, and have that same level of control that we have on the train as well. So uh, to get that out of the way, let's talk about that train experience and why you've all signed up for this <laughs> webinar to learn about uh, Canada's West Coast, the Canadian Rockies and how to experience it. Uh, it really is uh, a high-end luxury experience that you won't find elsewhere in Canada. Um, I know oftentimes luxury and train don't uh, go in the same sentence, but you will find in other parts of the world that uh, this is a more common experience. Uh, almost think of it as a, a river cruise or an Alaskan cruise experience on land. Um, Rocky Mountaineer, just a little bit about our history. We've been operating for 30 years. Uh, so 2020 was actually our 30th anniversary. I don't know if it still counts because the season unfortunately did not get underway. Uh, but it takes you through the... Uh, the mountainous peaks of uh, British Columbia, all the way from the Pacific West Coast into the heart of the Rockies in Alberta, Lake Louise and Banff, moving up to Jasper in the north and then everything in between. Um, just to show you where the train is actually operating, you can see our sort of main uh, outpost, Vancouver, Jasper, Lake Louise and Banff, as I mentioned. Uh, Calgary on the east is a great spot to us. Uh, Start or stop your journey. Uh, obviously, for flights, it's uh, very easy uh, to approach it from either end. And then you also see the stops of Whistler, Quinnell, and Kamloops. Those are your intermediary stops. Um, depending on the train journey that you're taking, you'll notice the three different colors that we have there, the green, blue, and red lines. Those are three distinct distinct Canadian route. So I'll get into that a little bit later and uh, the, the advantages that each of them sort of provide. Uh, they are going to many of the same destinations, but you will get a different flavor and flair depending on the area, depending on the season, um, depending on the direction that you uh, take the train. You might notice that uh, Rocky Mountaineer can be done either moving west to east or east to west, north to south. So lots of different options. And this is really why it's important to lean on your travel advisor to put together a curated custom itinerary just for you because there's so many different ways to do a Rocky Mountaineer journey. But a few things that you should know about it are that it is high-end luxury and it is daylight travel only. So the first question we always get asked are, uh, where do you sleep on the train? Well, we hopefully uh, won't have any passengers sleeping on the train uh, because then you'll be missing the, the sights and sounds that uh, are surrounding you constantly. So here are a few things that I can tell you about your Rocky Mountaineer journey. World-class service is something that we pride ourselves on. Um, this is especially true while you're on the train with our guest services hosts, our uh, train conductors, our operations crew, our food, culinary, and beverage team. But from the very beginning of your Rocky Mountaineer experience, experience. Um, we like to think that world-class service extends um, on every single aspect of your planning. Um, as soon as you step on the plane and you're starting your vacation until the very second that you, you end and are heading back home, we like to think that we keep that world-class service going all the way through. Uh, a feast for your senses. Now, I will be talking a lot about the food, beverage, culinary, elevated experience that you um, will be uh, undertaking while you're on the train. But really, it's a piece for all of your senses. The Rocky Mountaineer is a very interactive social experience um, while you're on the train car for these sort of six to eight hour um, travel days. You know, you really get to know well the, the people on the train, the guest service crew. 
Um, whether you're traveling in a small group, maybe just one or two people, or maybe it's a family affair. Either way, there's so much to see and do. We'll keep you entertained um, throughout the trip. So uh, absolutely bring a book if you want to uh, sort of zone out on your own. But there's definitely more than enough things to see and do while you're on the train. And then combining all of that in the majesty of the, uh, the BC wilderness, the rugged Alberta uh, geography, and combining that with the wildlife that you'll see out your, tra um, your train car, really when you're traveling at, you know, a 30, 35 mile an hour pace, it's very leisurely. The, the great advantage of a Rocky Mountaineer journey is that you don't have anywhere to be until your next destination. We're not trying to make the 12-15 stop in Kamloops to pick up other people. So uh, if there's an opportunity to stop by a uh, serene river or lake and there's a grizzly bear swimming, uh, absolutely, we can bring the train to a halt just so you can get that perfect selfie or video opportunity. So really combining all of those ingredients is what makes the Rocky Mountaineer experience so special. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about what the flow of your itinerary will be like. Um, this doesn't matter if you're traveling in the spring, summer, or fall, traveling from east to west, north to south. Um, what it's going to look like when you're on board the train is going to be very, very similar. We do like to get things rolling fairly early by about 8 a.m. in the morning. You'll get a wake-up call at your hotel with a coach transfer to the station. Now, the other thing about Rocky Mountaineer is we've really thought about everything. Don't worry about lugging uh, your, your luggage or your carry-ons with you. Leave it in your room. Our um, guest experience team will actually take that from your hotel, cart it to your next destination so it's waiting for you. You really just need to bring whatever you sort of feel you need for that day on the train. Um, there's a tremendous amount of leg room in silver leaf or gold leaf trains. So you can bring a small carry on or a day bag. You might want to bring a light sweater um, just depending on the seasons, but it is uh, a, a climate controlled car. So you don't have to worry about it being sweltering hot in the summer or a little too chilly in the shoulder season. So once the train is rolling at about 8 a.m. or so, your job is done. You can sit back and relax and really just soak in the sights and sounds. Let our guest services team take care of your every need. Um, we do a celebratory toast at the beginning of the day. That's a non-alcoholic one just to get things started, but you'll have uh, a host of uh, uh, options in terms of food and beverages and snacks throughout the day. I promise you, you will not go hungry. A lot of times our guests get off the train in Kamloops or Whistler or wherever they are, and they don't even have space for dinner. So you will be well fed, you will be well taken care of. But when you're on Gold Leaf or Silver Leaf, you'll have uh, breakfast in the morning, and we'll talk about the differences between those culinary experiences, and then lunch midday, and then again, snacks and beverages throughout the day. If you're the type of traveler where you like to get up and walk around and take pictures, um, really sort of interact with your surroundings, you can absolutely do that. Our guest services team, our hosts, will be taking care of the, the culinary as well as a narration storytelling experience. A lot of our hosts are actually native to the areas that you will be traveling in. So they have great insights into those lands and territories, stuff that you really don't know unless you've been there for a really long time. Um, and then at the end of the day, you'll be rolling into your next destination, maybe around 5 or 6 p.m., just depending on the route, depending on the direction. Uh, you'll be taken to your hotel, and then you'll have the evening to yourself to decide what you want to do. If you're in Banff or Lake Louise, you might want to go for a stroll. Um, maybe in downtown Banff, grab a quick bite to eat or do some late night shopping, whatever you like. But then we'll do it all over again the next day on way to your next destination. So when we talk about putting together the Rocky Mountaineer journey of your dreams, there are four elements that I wanna to touch on. One is the rail route. So those were the three different colored lines that we talked about. Then there's your service level. We have gold leaf and silver leaf. Step number three, choose the season. That's either spring, summer, or fall. And then 
what package suits your travel style. So this is what you're going to be doing off the train. Um, anything from day trips to Victoria and taking the ferry. Maybe you want to do some light adventuring and go for a hike up uh, Tunnel Mountain in Banff. There's really something to see and do for everyone. Whether you want a more curated package with day sightseeing uh, and guided tours, or if you want to adventure out on your own, we have that for you as well. So let's talk about the rail routes first, just so you can get an idea of where the train travels and what those different options look like. I'll start with first passage to the west. This is our most iconic most popular route and with good reason. It really tells the history of Canada coming together as a nation. Um, you'll notice that it starts in Vancouver in the west or Lake Louise and Banff in the east. Again, you can do these um, routes in either direction, but really these are the oldest train tracks that you will find in Canada going all the way back to the 1800s, just uh, really an engineering marvel of, uh, and it took a lot of collaboration between Canada, the US, even European engineers who had to be brought in to figure out how do we get this train to go through the Rocky Mountains and get out on the other side and join this great country that we call Canada. So on this trip, you're going to get a history lesson deep into um, Canada. We'll talk about uh, Craig Alachi and the, the last spike that you'll see, the spiral tunnels that uh, are sort of like a very slow paced uh, roller coaster for adults. It, it's just amazing to go in uh, a mountain on one side, spin around and end up going the other direction when you come out. Uh, it's something that uh, until you've experienced it, you know, words really just don't do it justice. But the other thing that's great about the First Passage to the West is that it combines so many different great regions of BC and Alberta. You have the big metropolitan center in Vancouver going in through the Fraser Valley, beautiful lush green valleys up into the arid dry Okanagan uh, where you'll stop over in Kamloops. There you see some of the beautiful lakes. Um, Hell's Gate is another, you know, we call it a hero shot. It's something that everybody is going to want to get their camera out and take a picture of uh, when you're traveling sh through the Shushwap area and the uh, Fraser Canyons. And then moving your way into the really rugged, um, untamed Alberta uh, Rockies, uh, moving past Castle Mountain and then into Lake Louise or Banff on your two-day trip. So it's got a little bit of something for everyone. And if you've never done the Rockies before, this is a really great option. Journey just, through the uh, clouds. If I can add something there. Oh, Tyler. absolutely, that, Danny. That's, that's the, uh, the trip that we took. Um, uh, spent a, a couple of days in uh, Calgary, uh, then jumped on the train and went through the Rockies, stopped in Kamloops, which was a lovely stop in itself and then on to Vancouver. Um, we were doing it as a, as a preface to our Alaska cruise, which we ended up actually taking uh, a cruise out of Seattle. Uh, that, that just uh, depends on the itinerary that you're particularly interested in. But um, I have a little tip, you know, and, and that is that the train ride was so phenomenal um, that uh, by taking that at the beginning and prior to our Alaska cruise, I was actually left kind of disappointed with the Alaska cruise just simply because the Rocky Mountaineer was so stunning. Um, so I would recommend to clients that uh, they might want to leave the best to last and uh, do their Alaska cruise if they're going to do that first and then do the train trip afterwards. It's, um, it's a good point, absolutely. We, we do find that a lot of guests uh, sometimes start with the train trip and uh, yeah, the, the rest of their vacation, not that, that it would necessarily be a letdown, but uh, some people uh, do find that it's, it's nice to leave it to the end and really go out with a bang. So yep. uh, good point there. Absolutely. Um, just moving over to the journey through the clouds, you'll notice that the first leg of that journey from Vancouver to Kamloops, identical to what you find on the first passage to the west. But on day two, from Kamloops up to Jasper, you take a northern jaunt, and this is really where you get into the wild, um, moving so far up north. And this is a great option for those who have maybe done Lake Louise and Banff and want to see the Rockies in a different light. Jasper, I just find um, it's sort of that uh, un 
under-recognized gem of the Alberta North, and it combines so many great elements that you find in Lake Louise and Banff and puts it together in a really unique way. Um, the scenery is going to be a, a much more drastic change. There you see Pyramid Falls, um, just a beautiful backdrop to be going through these stunning, lush forests. Uh, the, you know, the amount of greenery that you're going to encounter on these routes, these are um, not typically used for passenger routes that you'd find on uh, via rail. Um, some aren't even used for freight routes. So they're very, very specific to these Rocky Mountaineer journeys. Um, depending on the time of year, you know, you're really going to see the change in colors um, when, it, when it comes to the foliage and uh, all those seasonal things in the spring and the, later in the fall. Mount Robson, I want to point out, is, is a particular highlight. That's the, the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. Um, if you're lucky enough to get a clear day like that, you might get a beautiful shot there, but oftentimes it's shrouded in, in clouds and mist, very majestic, um, and really you need to get into the northern part of Alberta in, in the Rockies just so that you can witness it. So once you've um, made your way to Jasper, there's a lot that you can see and do there. But if you wanted to combine that with a Lake Louise or Banff portion, you can absolutely take a guided tour down the Athabasca glaciers, down the Columbia ice fields to that. So then you could then depart out of Calgary. So lots of options um, when you do a journey through the clouds route. Now moving over to Rainforest to the Gold Rush. This is our longest route. You'll notice that there's an extra stop in there. And this is probably our most diverse, just in terms of scenery and geography. Again, starting in Vancouver, actually out of our North Vancouver station, you know, you're in the very beautiful, temperate, mild Pacific climates, almost tropical in the summer. Um, so starting off by the Pacific Ocean, working your way up house down on the side of the Rockies, you know, you get this beautiful disposition of the Pacific Ocean nestled into, you know, the Whistler territory that you're moving up to. So you'll get a good amount of time to actually spend in Whistler because it's just a half day train journey. And for anyone who hasn't been to Whistler um, since the 2010 Olympics, you know, it has absolutely been revamped and revitalized just world class when it comes to hotels, shopping, restaurants, but obviously the nature and sightseeing is such an important part of that area. And it's beautiful that you get so much time to actually spend in that area um, during your Rocky Mountaineer journey. Also such an appreciation for indigenous culture. So there's a lot of opportunities to sort of dive deep into that. Moving up north now, we talked about Jasper being north. Well, Whistler to Quinell takes that to the next level. You know, you might be asking yourself, where the heck is Quinell? I've never even heard of this place. Well, this is where you move from the rainforest to the gold rush. This was a, a pretty big deal back in the 1800s when they were uh, panhandling and mining for gold. This was one of the most northern outposts before getting up into Alaska and the really north northern part of British Columbia. Um, I, I'm not going to lie to you. It's probably not as much to see and do as in uh, Banff or Lake Louise or Vancouver, but it's a great quaint little place to stop overnight and sort of recharge and energize your batteries. And then from Quinell to Jasper is just absolutely majestic. You get lost in nature. And if you're, um, you know, really looking to dive into that sort of forest terrain and really lush greenery, this is going to be the route for you. Um, some of the most untouched lands in that region that you can't even access by car uh, doing it on your own. So there's just such a difference between the geography from the start of your journey um, ending up in northern BC. Again, you will get to see Mount Robson, which is another crown jewel um, that you do uh, witness on that journey through the clouds. So I would absolutely recommend Rainforest of the Gold Rush for someone who's done uh, maybe BC and Alberta before, but really wants to take it to the next level. Just be warned, because of the northern nature of the route, it starts a little bit later in the season and ends a little bit earlier in the season than some of the other routes. So you might be looking at more of a summer departure for sure. So now that we've talked a little bit about the uh, train experience and uh, where the routes will take you, let's talk about how you want to spend your time on the train. And that's either in our excellent Silverleaf and Goldleaf 
service levels. Um, some of you might be asking, I thought there was a third one. Wasn't there a red leaf? Well, we jokingly uh, refer to red leaf as dead leaf. Hasn't been around for about six or seven years. And uh, interestingly enough, we actually took all of the red leaf cars stripped them down to their chassis and then completely rebuilt them up into silver leaf, completely renovated state-of-the-art cars. So they can absolutely go toe-to-toe -to -toe with gold leaf. Two different experiences. You'll notice that the biggest physical difference is that the gold leaf is a custom design by level coach. So there is that second level to it. Now, I don't call it quite a double decker or twice as high as the silver leaf um, because it isn't, but you do get a little bit more in the way of luxury and amenities on the gold leaf uh, train car just because you will have the outdoor viewing platform that's a bit more expansive as well as the uh, executive dining lounge on the main floor. So first I'll start off with Silverleaf, channelize you with that, and then we'll move up to Goldleaf and see if that might be a fit for you. Now Silverleaf, absolutely not anything to sneeze at at all. Um, in terms of the actual comfort level of Silverleaf, the seats, the leg room, everything like that, exactly the same as you're gonna find on Goldleaf. The major difference is that Everything is served to you at your seat. You're just on that one main level. Now you'll see in the upper right hand corner, the really expansive, almost floor to ceiling windows. So it lets in a tremendous amount of natural light, beautiful for picture and video taking opportunity. So we almost uh, find that some guests prefer silver leaf when it comes to those um, photo ops, just because the, the windows are so big. Now, if you're the type of traveler that likes to set it and forget it and let the world pass you by or let you pass the world by, then Silverleaf could absolutely be for you because it is service at your seat. Um, all of your beverages, all of your culinary needs from our guest service hosts will be taken care of and brought to you. Now, if you're thinking, well, what kind of food am I going to be getting on the train? Uh, is it box lunches or microwave dinners? No, absolutely not. This food is high quality being prepared fresh on the train. The biggest difference between silver leaf and gold leaf in terms of the culinary experience is that it doesn't have as expansive as a kitchen. So instead of five options for gold leaf, you might only have three options for a silver leaf breakfast or a silver leaf lunch. Now, I don't want to mislead you um, to that you, you can't get outside and uh, catch some fresh air or stretch your legs. You'll also notice that there is a small outdoor viewing platform that we call the breezeway, not quite as expansive as gold leaf, but uh, you still have that opportunity to poke your head out and take some pictures. The really nice thing I found about Silverleaf is the headroom. So if you're a taller passenger, I'm not myself. I'm only about five, six or so. So when I went on the, the Silverleaf train, I, I found it absolutely almost overwhelming. It's so big and open and airy. Um, it really doesn't feel like a confined train car that you're just in one level. So, um, Definitely, even though you're you're going to be on that one train car for your uh, six to eight hour journey, it doesn't feel cramped at all. The seats turn around. So if you're in a group of four or more, you can absolutely have that very social interactive experience. Now moving over to Gold Leaf. It is gold for a reason. So let's highlight the facts there. The first obvious one is you are seated on that upper level with the glass dome ceiling. So this is just an unbelievable way to sort of take in the sights and sounds, take it to that next level, brings in a, na uh, a tremendous amount of natural light, um, but it is temperature controlled. There is tinted glass. So if it's super, super bright in the summer, you know, you're not going to be blinded or anything like that. Um, and again, the climate will be uh, regulated for you. There in the bottom pictures, you see the expansive outdoor viewing platform can accommodate maybe six to eight people at a time. Um, and then really for the foodie, the food lover, the gourmand, Gold Leaf, absolutely for you if you want to kick it up to the next level. Um, the executive dining car is just uh, an unbelievable way to sort of have your breakfast and lunch. Um, and really have that counterbalance of uh, this majestic wilderness happening around you and then such a refined, elevated culinary setting on the inside. Um, let me just move 
to the next slide highlighting the type of food because again we always get asked well how how really high end are we talking about on the train we really like to lean into the seasonal ingredients um, depending on the type of year, depending on the route you're traveling in. I can't tell you this is exactly what the menu is going to look like. But yes, there could absolutely be some Pacific smoked salmon on there, some uh, braised Alberta beef, seasonal local ingredients, everything highlighting the regions. Here's a sample of a menu that you could uh, possibly encounter. But again, this is always being updated. You know, if you're going through BC and the Okanagan, you absolutely have to try some of those delicious wines. Um, but four or five options for every meal. And if you're wondering, well, I have an allergy or a nutritional restriction or something like that. Don't worry about that at all. We can absolutely take care of that for you, whether it's vegan, gluten-free, um, or otherwise. The only thing we're not really able to handle is a religious um, restriction such as kosher or halal because we don't have the facilities to be able to do that while on the train. But uh, if this doesn't get your taste buds uh, salivating, I don't know what will. So in, in a nutshell, that's what your train experience will look like on gold leaf or silver leaf. But we really feel like those two levels are extended to your hotel stays. Um, and you really can't go wrong either way. Silverleaf are going to be very well-known, comfortable brands like the Marriott, Sheridan, Delta. Um, the great thing about Silverleaf is you're really going to have your choice in terms of where you want your hotel to be. Um, if you want to be in the hustle and bustle of things, uh, walk out your front door and be in downtown Banff, then absolutely Silverleaf is going to be a great option for you. But if you want to go gold leaf all the way and uh, really dive into luxury on the train and off the train, you cannot go wrong. These are, you know, the most iconic properties that you will find in Canada, your Fairmonts, your uh, Rimrock Hotel in Banff. They can be a little bit more secluded. As you see the Chateau Lake Louise there, just right off the lake. Um, the Rimrock and Banff is actually built on a mountainside. So depending on the location, you might be a little bit further out of the downtown core. So keep that in mind um, when you're working with your travel advisor on planning your Rocky Mountaineer journey. Um, again, Silverleaf is going to give you a little bit more option in terms of location, but Goldleaf really cannot be rivaled when it comes to uh, the service and luxury level that you bring to your uh, journey. Now, uh, before I jump into the destinations, if you're wondering, can I do a gold leaf uh, train and a silver leaf hotel or vice versa? Yes, absolutely. You can mix and match. And that's what makes Rocky Mountaineer so great is the uh, ability to customize and really curate your package to your needs. Um, but let's now talk about some of those destinations that you're going to be going to. You know, we talked about where you're going to travel to. We talked about what your life is going to be like while you're on the train in the hotels. So let's jump into Banff starting in the east, uh, very much like Whistler that I already mentioned. You know, if you'd maybe been there in the 80s or 90s, it was a little bit of a sleepy uh, ski town. Well, not anymore. World-class uh, resort and facilities year-round. Obviously well-known for skiing and snowboarding in the winter, but it's on full display in the spring, summer, and fall months as, where, as well. Absolutely anything you could possibly want in terms of shopping, uh, restaurants, guided tours, hiking, being able to, uh, you know, go to a, a four-star restaurant for lunch and then go hit the hot springs or do the Banff gondola in the afternoon. You know, you can really pack a punch in terms of an itinerary uh, for Banff. So you're not going to want to sleep on it. You're absolutely going to need more than one day in there. Um, a lot of people love just uh, the proximity to Calgary. It's very, very easy pre or post. Um, but again, th this is for the traveler who really wants to dig deep into the Rockies and have it all. Moving over to Lake Louise, just a, a short transfer away from Banff, um, it takes nature to the next level. Now, you're not going to have as much to see and do in terms of shopping and restaurants and things like that. But if you're a nature lover and you want to get lost, out in the, the great outdoors, you know, you can't do it any better than Lake Louise. This is why people travel from all over the world 
uh, to go to the Rockies and to go to Banff and Lake Louise. It's really unparalleled, uh, the pristine, tranquil beauty of the lakes and surroundings there. So again, if you wanted to do a day hike or a little bit of a guided tour, but then come back and pamper yourself with a spa, massage day, um, a, a five course dinner at the Fairmont Lake Louise, you know, you can absolutely have it all, but it's going to be a more relaxed pace. Absolutely. Now, moving up north to Banff, uh, I know I mentioned it earlier saying that uh, I thought it really did combine some of the best elements of Lake Louise and Banff. Uh, Jasper really does sort of combine everything you'd want there in terms of your outdoor adventurous spirit. You know, you could do a lake boat cruise. You can do the uh, Jasper gondola, the skywalk, uh, whitewater rafting, day trips. Um, or you can just enjoy yourself in a hotel resort type setting. The cool thing about Jasper, it's got this really fun little downtown, um, not quite as big or as expansive as Banff, but some really fun things to see and do. It's a little bit more seasonal than Banff as well. So if you go in the shoulder season, it might not be quite as bustling as you might find some of the other destinations. But uh, really, if you haven't done um, – Jasper before absolutely look into it it's a great way to sort of extend your journey to uh, journey through the clouds and then work your way down on one of our guided tours okay moving over to Vancouver well who hasn't heard of Vancouver but until you've really been there you haven't experienced you know everything that it has to offer I was fortunate enough to live there for three years and I've never seen a city truly combine outdoor nature and wilderness with you know big city living there is something for everyone to see and do beautiful capilano suspension bridge in north vancouver just a quick 15 minute ferry ride from downtown uh, obviously you have stanley park there 10 times bigger than central park and just steps away from the beach the ocean um hot downtown restaurants and shopping you have uh, granville island and the seawall where you can do a leisurely stroll my wife is from vancouver and uh, she would go jogging there and she would actually see michael buble sometimes i can't guarantee that you'll see him on your trip but uh, you, you never know um, the ability to do a, a stopover on the island, head over to Victoria, it's beautiful in the summer, maybe even go Upper Island or head over to Tofino. Um, really, you know, Vancouver is one of those destinations where you could spend a week there and say there's not enough time. But uh, anything from your downtown shopping, restaurants, um, guided tours, you can't go wrong with Vancouver. And it's a great way to start or end your trip. So. Let's move over to when we can travel. And we always get asked, when is the best time to take a Rocky Mountain Air trip? Well, I always say there's no bad time to travel except for the winter because we're not operating. But spring, summer, or the fall, uh, they bring a different flair, a different feeling. Let's start with the spring. Our season is going to be uh, opening up in the end of April. And depending on where you're spending more time, whether that's in Banff, Lake Louise, or Jasper, versus the more temperate, mild climates of Vancouver, Vancouver, you know, the season and the weather could be drastically different. Um, still in the Rockies, you're going to be experiencing a little bit of that winter chill, but it has a beautiful feel to it. It's energized. Um, as you move your way west, everything starts to sort of uh, come into season, um, come into bloom. The beautiful thing about wildlife is that they'll just be waking up, coming out of hibernation. They're a little bit sleepier, not so much scared off by the train. So great uh, for photo ops or for the wildlife lover. If you're a bird watcher or anything in between, you know, this could be a, a great time of year to really seize that opportunity. It's a little bit slower just in terms of uh, travel. So, um, just everything from the guided, guided tours to flights to restaurants and hotels, not quite so crowded in the spring. Now, having said that, summer is the most popular time to travel in Canada for a reason. Everything is on full display and with good reason. Um, uh, the Calgary Stampede in uh uh might be a great add-on to the beginning or end of your journey. It's always a, a great uh inclusion on a Rocky Mountaineer trip. This is really when you could start looking into combining it with an Alaskan cruise or something like that pre or post. Um, but be warned if you want to travel in the summer, if you were looking at a gold leaf uh, rail or hotel itinerary, 
book early and book often because these are the first dates to go. Um, we don't know if we'll have international travelers next year, but absolutely, this is when they like to travel. And if you like the more vibrant, energized time of year, then summer could absolutely be for you. Wildlife can be hit and miss depending on uh, the route that you're taking into the further north. You might have a better chance at that, but uh, they're going to be sort of in the middle of their full season as well. But the weather is going to be beautiful, whether you, you start in the east or start in the west, moving north to south. Um, everything will be on full display. Now, moving into the autumn, uh, I don't want to sleep on autumn just because this is becoming a very, very popular time for Canadians to travel with the uncertainty of 2021. Um, you know, moving your dates a little bit later in the year might be preferable for those of you who have cottages and like to spend your summers doing that. You know, uh, September or even our early October departure might be a great relaxed change of pace you're still going to get beautiful weather, but you're moving into the shoulder season. So uh, some of the summer activities will be shutting down. It's a little bit more quiet, a uh, bit more relaxed change of pace, but um, still a very beautiful time to travel. Uh, flights, hotels, everything like that, a little bit more accessible. So uh, keep that in mind. A great time for Canadians to travel. We usually see international tourism sort of uh, slow around that point, but still everything available and open to you just in terms of your amenities and your day trips and everything like that. So since we uh, mentioned some of the things that you can do off the train, either going to Vancouver Island or up to Whistler, or doing a gondola ride, this is where you can be creative and truly making your Rocky Mountaineer journey one of a kind. So whether that's a self-drive exploration, if you feel like you're a master of the Rockies and want to do it again and really dive deep, do it at your own leisure, you could absolutely do that where you rent a car in Banff, bring it up to Jasper on your own, drop it off there, and then take the train to Vancouver. Or if you want everything taken care of from A to Z, um, we have gondola uh, rides, helicopter rides, guided tours, hiking, uh, anything from light adventure into, you know, more hands-on. Um, if you're someone who wants to check a lot of things off your uh, to-do list, but maybe do it in a more controlled environment, a sightseeing tour is a great way to, to sort of fit a lot of things into a short amount of time. We use Brewster Tours in Alberta. They're really the best in the business there. Um, but absolutely, look at heading over to Vancouver Island in Victoria, beautiful butcher gardens you can see in the picture there, or spending a little bit of extra time doubling back to Whistler and uh, spending time um, you know, northern, north of Vancouver. You really can't go wrong, but there's something like a hundred different packages that we have with Rocky Mountaineer, so it can be a bit overwhelming. Again, this is where I really, really stress working with your travel advisor because they are the experts when it comes to putting all of this together. Now, if you see a package that you like um, and maybe 95% of it hits everything that you're looking for, but you say to yourself, you know what, I'm afraid of heights. I don't want to do a gondola ride or a helicopter tour. No problem at all. Take that out and the cost savings will be passed back to you. You can use it for maybe a guided tour or a meal or extending your trip in some way. So um, let's talk about a couple of those featured pass, uh, packages. Uh, I'll mention first passage to the West at leisure. It's a really, really popular way just to spend a little bit more time in the Rockies. Again, this is on our website in our brochures. You see one day in Vancouver to start everything off, start your train journey, moving over to Kamloops for a night and then two nights each in Lake Louise and Banff. This is where you really get in your Rockies sightseeing uh, Banff National Park, Yoho National Park, doing a day trip up the Columbia ice fields. Really, there's so much to see and do it there. And then finishing off with one day in Calgary. We know that traveling from the East Coast to uh, Alberta and BC, you're not going to just do a two or three day train journey and then fly back. Now, if everything I said and mentioned uh, in this uh, webinar, you're thinking, sign me up. How can I do it all? Well, maybe a Grand Rail Circle um, package is for you. Now, this would be combining all three of our routes in Canada. There you see starting in Vancouver, working your way up the rainforest to the gold rush, all the way to Jasper, spending a few nights there, then taking your time down the Columbia ice fields to Lake Louise and Banff, two days in Lake Louise, three days in Banff, and then working your way back on the first passage to the West. 
uh, ending back up in Vancouver. <laughs> this is really the itinerary where you can say, yes, check, check, check. I did it all. I saw it all. Um, but again, you, you can do this with one, two, three different routes, combine it however you like. Anything from two days up to 13 days, really the possibilities are endless. Now, we always get asked this question, and Danny mentioned doing uh, an Alaskan cruise. Um, is it a good fit? And something like 60% of those who have taken the Rocky Mountaineer have also done an Alaskan cruise. So yes, if you're wondering, absolutely. Rocky Mountaineer guests are cruisers. Alaskan cruise, river cruise. We like to think we bring that atmosphere to the Canadian uh, West Coast and the Canadian Rockies. It's very leisurely, very high end. That's the sort of demographic that you're working with. Um, so if you've done that in the past or we're thinking about maybe doing an Alaskan or river cruise in the future, but maybe with 2021 being a bit uncertain, wanting to stay within Canada, we would absolutely urge you to move Rocky Mountaineer up your bucket list or your to-do to list for next year's travel. Um, and with that in mind, we do have a few promotions. Uh, I think with Rocky Mountaineer, as with many other companies out there, we've learned over the last eight months that it's important to uh, be flexible um, we need to uh, make sure that we are incentivizing you to come on to the Rocky Mountaineer the best way possible. So what better way to do that than uh, giving you some extra value? We've extended our mountain bound promotion. For those of you who are looking at a longer package of three day, or the eight days or more, pardon me, you can get three free perks valued up to $800 per couple. So this would be a hotel night an airport transfer at the beginning or end of your journey and a free dinner. Um, this would be when you're not on the train. So either before or after the train portion of your journey, we've extended this offer to January 15th. So uh, you still have, you know, about a month and a half to, to take it full advantage of that. If maybe you're thinking of booking in the new year, um, you'll also notice on there, this can be combined with our, enhanced flexible booking policy, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, just going back to what I mentioned about uh, moving with the times, uh, things, we, we realize the need to be flexible. So there's a refundable portion to it, uh, date changes into the 2023 season, as well as a name change. But really what I'm excited to offer you today and this just came out yesterday, so this is hot off the presses, is our first ever Canadian residence promo. So this is just for you, just for the 2021 year. And I can confidently say that this is offering our best ever pricing. So whether you're traveling solo or in a couple or with a group of people, uh, this is a great way to see Rocky Mountain here in 2021. If you thought that maybe uh, the price point was a little bit out of your comfort zone before, Silverleaf has never been more affordable. And for those of you who have been looking to maybe upgrade to Goldleaf, absolutely, this is the time to seize the moment. Uh, we just launched the promotion yesterday. It will be running through the end of February, uh, February 2026. So you still have lots of time to take advantage of the offer. Um, no date restrictions available on all packages. So uh, again, I can confidently say this is probably a once and only time that we'll be doing something quite so uh, rich in terms of value for uh, for a cost savings. Depending on the length of tour, it works out to five to seven hundred dollars per person. So absolutely, you do not want to sleep on this offer. And again, similar to Mountain Bound, this Canadian resident promo is combinable with our new enhanced flexible booking policy. So I'll just touch on that for a minute. Um, the main ingredients to this policy are at time of booking, when you put down your deposit, it starts a 60 day fully refundable risk free window. So that means you have 60 days to decide if you want to go through with the itinerary and the booking or you can cancel for any reason get your deposit back. Absolutely no, no uh, harm, no foul on that. Beyond that 60 days, you will have two free date changes that you can use up to 60 days before your travel date. So you could push it to later in the 2021 season, 2022, or even into 2023. So a lot of flexibility. 
and a movable timeline there. And then obviously we know we plan for the best, but sometimes things come up and life gets in the way. So we are adding a name change as well. This can be done up to 30 days before travel. As long as one of the names on the original booking stays the same, you will be able to do a name change on the other parties on that booking. So all of that combined, hopefully that will give you the tools to work with your travel advisor to figure out the right dates, the right package that works for you. But just know that you do have a bit of a safety net and a security blanket there to pivot and change things if something comes up and you need to move your dates. Now, if you thought that was all, no, we still have another announcement that just came out a couple weeks ago. Um, introducing our first ever U.S. route. We're no longer just in Canada, Rockies to the Red Rock. So this is something that's been in the works for almost five years. Um, we were planning on launching this in 2022, but we've moved up the timeline to 2021. This is our brand new package that is a two-day train journey um, going between Denver, Glenwood Springs, Colorado, and Moab, Utah, which, if you're not familiar with, is just a gateway to all those amazing national parks, Zion and Bryce Canyon. So much to see and do in the, around there, really leaning into the Southwest U.S. influences um, and the Indigenous cultures of the region. Um, ability to do anything from a two-day to a nine-day trip with sightseeing, guided tours, and then bringing you either to Salt Lake City in the north or Las Vegas. Who doesn't like to spend a little bit of time in Las Vegas? Might not be on your list for 2021, but absolutely keep this in mind for the future. Maybe do a Canadian route next year and then look at doing our U.S. route in 2022 down the road. Um, I'll just go back two slides quickly. Packages starting at $16.75. That's for a two-day rail-only package. So um, that's in Canadian. And right now, you do have the ability to book very risk-free, um, just a $35 Canadian deposit, $25 U.S. Um, and you can pick your dates for the 2021 season. We don't have 2022 available quite yet. Uh, but again, this has our enhanced flexible booking policy rolled into it as well with the 60-day refundable window, two free date changes into the 2023 season, and a name change 30 days before departures. So if you've already done the Canadian route and thinking, I want to go back on the Rocky Mountaineer, but try it out uh, as something different, well, welcome to the wild, wild west of the U.S. So um, thank you so much for all of your time and let me uh, ramble on for um, the last 45 minutes or so. I'm going to turn it back over to Danny here, and uh, he's going to tell you a little bit about his time on the Rocky Mountaineer because while you'll be working with him on figuring out your package, you can lean into his uh, first-hand experience on that. Tyler, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, wow, just <laughs> you just kept hitting us with all kinds of interesting things uh, and uh, very illuminating. Thank you. Uh, yeah, some of the pictures that are up on the screen there, I guess all of those pictures were mine. Uh, unfortunately, when we did our trip, which was must have been seven or eight years ago, we were on the dead leaf. Um, so all of the... Uh, all of the pictures that we took inside, we weren't able to use because it didn't portray the uh, the train. But there were a lot of personal experiences there, um, you know, usually initiated by the uh, host in the uh, car that made our, our trip particularly enjoyable. The uh, breezeway, the open area between the, the different cars, was was a place as a travel agent. I spent a lot of time. As a matter of fact, many of these pictures were taken not through glass but from the breeze breezeway. A lot of rivers, I guess the one that is particularly notable there in, in the bottom right corner where two rivers met and you can see that one river has brown water and the other uh, river has clear water. So um, just a lot of fascinating experiences there. Again, at the time that we went, uh, there were, um, I think there were pine trees that were being invaded by a particular beetle uh, and uh, the beetles were, were actually killing them, but the, it turned their foliage red. Um, and, and the reason for that is that the uh, climate change, um, normally the intense colds of the winters would kill these bugs, but uh, because it was warming up even a couple of degrees, uh, they were proliferating. I don't know what the situation is now, but I can't imagine it would be, it would be any different. Um, the, the old railroad, uh, a lot of times uh, when we went through the mountains, I mean, I just absolutely couldn't believe that they put railroad tracks there. Uh, 
we had uh, old telephone poles that had wires hanging from them. Sometimes they went, they ran for, you know, hundreds and hundreds of yards and then would just dangle off. And I was just saying to myself when I saw them that I just can't imagine anybody up there installing those and, uh, and repairing them. So, you know, the experience with uh, the culture and the history was was phenomenal. I, I speak very, very highly of the of the Rocky Mountain here. So well, you know, and, Danny, I was just going to say they didn't have Google Maps back then, so uh, <laughs> they might have done it a little bit differently <laughs> had they had that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, just a note before concluding: uh, next week, uh, same time, Tuesday, December the eighth at uh, six thirty. Uh, we'll learn about Riviera River Cruises, uh, a cruise company that has a reputation for one of the a uh, few companies that actually caters to the uh, solo traveler market. So not only for a few cabins on every trip, but for actual entire sailings where all of the cabins will be um, sold for uh, solo uh, travelers. So that's something to look forward to, uh, to next week. Again, Tyler, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting. It just brought back a lot of memories for me and, uh, and I'm certainly looking forward to particularly the, uh, the US uh, version at some point in the future. So thank you very much. Absolutely, we're all excited. Danny, thanks so much for having me on and uh, to all the CARB members listening out there. Uh, we look forward to hosting you on the Rocky Mountain year next year and many years beyond that. So um, take care, stay safe. Uh, I'll be signing off here in, uh, in, in Toronto, but uh, absolutely get in touch with Danny for all your travel needs. Thank you.